Welcome back, Rue fans, to Denny Sanford Premier Center, where the Kansas City Rue's men's basketball team is going to take on the Denver Pioneers. I'm your play-by-play -play announcer, Zach Gunter, joined here by my color commentator, Jaslyn Summers. And honestly, last night was a bit of a disappointment. It was a disappointing end to a disappointing season, to say the least. Right, but I feel like the men's team here is going to shake up the house a little bit. You know, it's going to be a lot different from last night's game. To that point, the Ruse have beat Denver by a combined average of 14 and a half points, 14 on February 1st and 15 on February 29th, and held Denver to 10 points less than their average on the season, 70 points per game. Is that a credit to the defense of the Ruse or just a slow offense by the Denver Pioneers? I'd say it's probably a combination of the both, but I mean, our our defense this year has been pretty solid. Yeah, um, the Ruse average, or I'm sorry, the Pioneers average 82.6 points per game. The Ruse only allow 69 and a half per game. And the Ruse average 72.3, while the Pioneers allow 81.9. So it's going to be a battle of defense for the Ruse. And just for the Denver Pioneers, they're gonna be hoping for offense. But the Pioneers are going to be looking for revenge as the Pioneers have, they, uh, they were 6-10 and 10 in the Summit League compared to the Ruse 10-6. and six. So talk a little bit about the, uh, the awards that came out on Thursday. Yeah, so Thursday the Summit League awards were announced and the Ruse won a good handful of those awards with head coach Marvin Menzies winning coach of the year. And then we have guard Jamar Brown, first team all summit slash all newcomer team slash newcomer of the year. So he won three awards. We've got guard Babacar Diallo, all defensive team, guard Christian Corsalt, sixth man of the year, and guard Jason Penny, freshman of the year. And over to the Pioneers, they won two awards. Guard Tommy Brunner won first team all summit. And forward Toku Tayamano. Tayamo? Toko so, Tainamo. Yes. <laughs> I need to work on that uh, pronunciation. Anyways, he won all summit honorable mention. So we're going to get to see some really good players in today's game. Yes. Uh, Tommy Brunner, as you mentioned, who won um, first team all summit, who, who made the first team all summit, um, he was held to. Um, only 12 points in the Ruse first game against Denver. And then uh, in the second, he picked up 31 points, but the Pioneers still lost. The Pioneers won their last quarterfinal match in 2018. Meanwhile, the Ruse haven't had a Summit League tournament win since their game against Valparaiso in the 2007 quarterfinals. Yikes. And I mean, this is the first season since 2004 as the Ruse being the second, the number two seed, I'm sorry. And it's been almost 20 years. Yeah, um, the 2004-2005 season was uh, one to remember for the Ruse, um, but they did get bounced by Oakland in, the, uh, I believe, the first round of that uh, season. So hopefully Coach Marvin Menzies has it in their minds, in the Ruse minds, to really just hit the ground running and get everything going. So the Ruse, as I mentioned, have gone five and 19 in 19 tournament appearances in the Summit League, have never won the championship. And the, but looking at the lines tonight, uh, the betting lines, Vegas has the, uh, has the Ruse as a six point favorite with the over under set at 149. Now, if you're in Kansas, I'm not necessarily qualified to uh, give you betting suggestions, but in the last two meetings, the Ruse won by an average of 14 and a half and averaged uh, the games averaged uh, 154.5 total points. So I would say uh, bet the Ruse and bet the over. So uh, that's just a little bit of that. Um, here soon, we're going to cut away to the national anthem. And then after that, we will have the Ruse game tip off for you. The Ruse are 0-3 in neutral site games, while the Pioneers are 1-1. One one. So there's a little bit of more information on all of this. But if I had some keys to the game, I would say uh, for, the, for the Pioneers, it is keep Jamar Brown away from, well, 
everything. Mm -hmm. He does everything good. And for the Ruse, keep Tommy Bruner in check. Now, a little bit of noticing around the stadium. We've got a lot more fans here than we did last night. Right, Zach. And as you were saying, we're 0-3 in the neutral site games. However, we've got a lot of Rue fans in the audience, and it's almost like a home game. You would hope so. But we are going to cut away for now to, well, no, we're, uh, we're meeting the starters. So let's go through that real quick. We've got guard Tommy Bruner, guard DeAndre Craig, guard Jackson Brinchley, uh, forward Pedro, Pedro Lopez San Vicente, and forward Toko Tynamo for the Pioneers. As for and the Ruse. For the Ruse, we've got Jason Petty, guard, Babacar Diallo, guard, ja Jamar Brown, guard, Cameron Foss, guard, and Melvin Ibonkley, forward. So these Ruse here, uh, Jamar Brown, of course, averages 15.3 points per game. He is the key to the game for everyone, uh, for the Ruse. Um, Cameron Foss, uh, the only game that I ever saw him miss, he missed because he was sick. He averages 9.8 points per game. He was really, really hot at the start of the season uh, from behind the arc. I watched him at uh, Allen Fieldhouse against Kansas, and he was just lighting it up from the three-point line. But since then, he's gotten more into assists where he had, uh, well, he only he averaged less than one per game, but he's gotten more into just passing the ball. Um, Melvin Abonkali, he's more of a, he's more of just the big guy for the Ruse. He's not tall, but not, or he's not super tall, but he's big. Uh, Jason Petty, he is, he just plays well. He's He's got good court presence. And Bob Cargiallo, he is the assist guy on the team, 2.6 assists per game. So um, the Ruse are getting in introduced currently uh, in the arena as the higher seed the two seed versus the seven seed. What worries me and what worries a lot of other fans is just the two versus the seven because that is the last time the Ruse lost as a two seed back in 2004, 2005 against the seven seed, Oakland. Right. And I'm hoping that tonight's game is not going to be anything like that game all the way back then. I'm hoping to stay here for a few more days. Me too. Uh, it kind of smells really bad here, but... Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> we went up and visited the waterfalls today because we are here in Sioux Falls and it smelled not the best, but the falls were very pretty nonetheless. The Roos are actually now getting introduced. They were still introducing the uh, Omaha Mavericks. So uh, that's taken a while and uh, it's uh, certainly taken longer than it did last night where they just kind of really quickly introduced the women and then got into it. Now. There's just this whole uh, event for the player introductions, but we love it. Yeah, right. We've got to get that team merit up, you know? We've got all the dancers out here. Um, our, what is it, the Ruse Mob? The Ruse Mob has here. a bunch of light up sticks yeah. going on. Yeah, got some signs. We're just really showing out for our men's basketball team. And like I was saying yesterday, that support is really important for the environment of the team. I'm hoping to get my energy up and really just uh, just feel this game. You know, it's 8.30 at night. You and I, we, uh, we drank some energy drinks coming into this. I woke up at 7.30 this morning by a complete accident. So, you know, I, I'm feeling it a little bit, you know, this game tipping off so late. I might be dead by the end of this. You know but. what? I, I chugged that monster, so I am I'm ready to go, and I'm pretty freaking excited for this game. No, I'm feeling it right now. I have been waiting for this day for weeks. And after last night's disappointing loss, we've definitely got to get a nice little pickup from tonight's game. Yes. Um, head coach Marvin Menzies has been talking a lot about just getting the team hyped up, ready for this game. They know what they can do. They know how to do it. They just need to execute on the floor. So. And with a handful of our players winning a bunch of pretty cool awards, you really think that we're going to show out tonight. Uh, I'm going to check real quick to see if this stream is posted on the Casey Rue News website. It's not. Um, but 
Well, I sent out the stream to a couple of my uh, family members at home, so hopefully they're out there listening. And just want to give a quick shout out to my grandfather, whose birthday is today. So unfortunately, he's not here in South Dakota with us, but hoping that he had a great day and he's about to watch some fantastic basketball. We hope so. Happy birthday to him. Oh my gosh. Well, it's certainly bright now that uh, now that the lights have come back on. But it looks like the two teams are taking their final little huddles before the tip off. You know what? I don't think we're actually going to be cutting away for the national anthem. If I remember correctly from last year, they only do it for the first game of the day. Oh. Um, so I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, we will be staying with you all the way into the first media timeout. So it's looking like we will be getting set for tip-off here soon. And uh, just got a signal from Denver's coach to go ahead and start the game. So looks like we're about to... Let's see who's going to be heading half court to be getting these, uh, to getting the tip off. Looks like it's going to be uh, Ibankali, number twenty, and number twenty-five for the uh, for the Pioneers, Toko Tynamo. No hesitation here. We're just going to go right into the game. And Denver does win the tip off, but immediately is forced back into their own territory. But uh, now 23, Jackson Brinchley had the ball passed out to DeAndre Craig. Craig out to, that is Sam Vicente, back to Craig. Tynamo, and the ball oh. is kicked all the way into Denver territory by uh, Tommy Bruner. That's going to be a turnover for him really early on in the game. Now, Bruner is the leading scorer in the nation. He averages 24 and a half points per game, and the last time I checked, he had, like, I believe, 764 points on the season. The ball was actually kicked down into Rue territory, as we're now taking out in the ball. Yes, that is my mistake. Babacar Giallo has the ball now. Immediately, you can tell the game difference from women's and ba men's basketball is how quick-paced it is, and there's quite a bit of height difference from yes. men's players and Jason women's Petty players. put up a shot and got fouled, I believe. First foul of the game. And I believe now that we actually have natural audio going on, and first of all, I would like to mention we, we are connected to Ethernet. You should not be getting any cutouts like we did last night, but Jason Petty is at the line shooting two. The first shot goes right in. First points of the game by Jason Petty on a free throw. Hopefully um, the foul calls won't be as dramatic much <laughs> as they were yesterday on the ruse, but it already seems that um, we're not getting as many called on us in the first, what, minute of the game. Letting you know that uh, Jason Petty did make his second as well, as Brinchley now has the ball for the Pioneers, and it's out to Craig. Craig dribbling around, trying to find the lane, finds it, puts up a shot, no good, and I believe that was rebounded by Melvin Ibonkley. Ibonkley is a beast, I tell you what. How tall is he? I can't. He's, he's big. He's big. <laughs> um, About seven feet, I think. Uh, Melvin Ibonkley is 6'8". Yep. Oh, what a block by, I believe that was Jackson Brinchley, just absolutely swatted the ball out of the air. DeAndre Craig goes in, and a shot by, I believe that was Toko Tynamo, goes in for two. Two and two on the board. But what I was mentioning with the uh, natural audio is you should be able to be hearing the Rue mob uh, chanting Rue up. Bob Rue Cochalo up indeed. Passes out to Jamar Brown. Oh, and his shot just went off the back rim. Now, uh, DeAndre Craig with the ball out to Bruner. Bruner thought about taking three, didn't. Sam Vicente now with the ball out to Bruner. Back to Brinchley. Brinchley passes out to San Vicente, who takes a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by Cameron Foss. Diallo will be acting as the uh, will be acting as the one taking the ball down the court. I just can't remember what position that is. Point guard. <laughs> Point guard. Yes. 
Listen, in it's the late. Summit League, in the <laughs> Summit League, we oh, what a three by Cameron Foss. In the Summit League, we deal with guard and forward. We don't deal with all five positions. All right, DeAndre Craig now with the ball. Passes out to Brinchley. Brinchley trying to find the lane. Passes out to DeAndre Ooh. Craig. That will be out of bounds. Horrible pass. Yes, very bad pass indeed. <laughs> the band is now chanting, nice pass. They really love to, uh, to taunt the opposing team, which, you know, that's what we love about them, except when it's during warm-ups. It can get quite annoying when every shot that uh, the opposing team makes, they just, chant, they just shout brick. Diallo was getting trapped there for a second. Cameron Foss takes another three, and, and it's raised. Beautiful three. Foss is feeling it right now. DeAndre Craig to Bruner. Bruner trying to find anything and passes out to Craig again. Craig to Brinchley. Brinchley takes a three. No good. Bounces out. Let's just uh, hope that our shots keep falling and theirs keep not. not. <laughs> oh, Foss with oh another three. Oh, my gosh. Three. And the drain. Oh, my he gosh. He didn't even set his feet. He just stepped into that. And immediately a timeout called by Denver. Cameron Foss, you absolute beast. It is 11 to two. My God. Cameron Foss. Cameron draining Foss. threes. Three threes. Three in the first for three. four minutes of the game. Three for three from the field. Three for three from the three. We. Three is our lucky number, it seems. We are in a 30 second timeout, so I thought about taking a break there for a second, but I realized it was 30, so we'll be sticking with you here for now. The energy in the arena right now is just. So geared towards the ruse, I would Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I failed to mention, and uh, I'm remiss for not mentioning it, is that the ruse are on a six-game win streak, right? Oh, right, right. It started out with uh, one seeded at the time, North Dakota, which they won. And then it uh, went on to then one seeded South Dakota State. Or, I'm sorry, I think I got that reversed. Um, and Denver was mixed in there, but... They are on a six-game win streak. They are hot. Now Craig goes charging in, find, trying to find anything, and his shot oh. no good, and a foul will be called. Uh, I believe that's going to be on uh, Jason Petty. Yep, Jason Petty was aiming for the rebound and reached right over. Um, can't see who's at the line. I believe two, that's 24? 24, so Isaiah Carr. Yeah, reached right over him, and it was a very clear foul. Yes. Um... Now, as a Rue fan, I would prefer that not to be called, but, you know, it was a foul, so. At least we're playing aggressively. Yes, and the first free throw is good. That is their first point since it was 2-2. Two to two. So that was a 9-0 run by the Rues, now ended. And I believe that all three of those, or all, all nine of them, oh, what a air ball on that <laughs> second free throw. Oh it didn't God. even touch the rim, just went straight down. That's a little bit sad. Now, you got to wonder, is the pressure of this situation, it being do or die, getting to the Pioneers? I mean, it's kind of evident that it might be. Jason Petty thought about taking three, didn't. And now... Um, Cameron Foss passed it back to uh, Petty. It bonkily goes in, puts up a little bit of a hook shot, and it's rebounded by the Ruse, and a foul is called. And that's going to be against the Ruse. It bonkily will get the call, and his name was mispronounced by the announcer, but... Um, I mean, it's a pretty unique last name. It's a little bit hard to say. I was saying it as... Uh, Ibonkali, or I'm sorry, Ibonkali there for a second, but it is Ibonkali. Now that I know how to pronounce his name, I can't mispronounce it. <laughs> okay, uh, Toko Tynamo with the ball now, yep. and a foul called, I believe, on uh, Jamar Brown, which is very unfortunate. We are, yeah. We've reached the under 16 timeout, so we will go to break, but we will be right back with this very exciting first half of the game.
Welcome back to our to the Denny Sanford Arena. My apologies. Currently, the score is 11-3. Brews are in the lead, and we are coming back onto the court. Yes, and one thing that's interesting about this game so far is that while the Roos have only hit three field goals, all three of them have been three-pointers. Meanwhile, the only field goal that the, uh, that the Pioneers have made was a two-point shot. So we are looking at 11-3 to three as the Denver Pioneers are set to inbound. And that is DeAndre Craig now with the ball trying to find the lane, does a little spin move, Passes out to Toko Tynamo, back to DeAndre Craig, who thinks about taking three, doesn't. Now goes into the paint, puts up a shot, and it falls. So it is now 11 to 5. Christian Corsalt, the uh, sixth man off the uh, Ruse bench, and frankly, the most humble person I've ever talked to, had the ball. And the shot to Jason Petty, three point shot falls. I'm glad we're seeing a lot of threes in today's game. <laughs> it's really making this entertaining. I get to call all that. Tommy Bruner with the ball now, who I don't believe is taking a shot. DeAndre Craig looks to take three, and it, oh, bounces off the back iron in. I expected that to bounce off the back iron out, but no, it went straight in. Now Christian Corsalt out to Jamar Brown for the ruse. Jason Petty again thought about taking three, didn't. Christian Corsalt into, I believe that is Alan Mukeba, who puts up a shot, no good. Gets his own rebound, puts up a shot, and it falls. Seems like after that first timeout, Je Coach uh, Jeff Wolbrun of the Pioneers kind of lit a fire underneath them, and they seem like their heads are a little bit back in the game. Yes, DeAndre Craig takes another three off the back iron this time and rebounded by the Roos. Christian Corsalt again with the ball. Out to Cameron Foss, who puts up another three. No thought about it, and uh, it this one was off, but rebounded by the Roos. Uh, and Jamar Brown takes his own, or takes the shot and it falls. We are looking at a 10-point lead by the Ruse now, 18 to 8. Yes, it sucks to see that Foss finally missed a three, but he was feeling it there for a while. Thankfully Bruner, for Brown. And that is number 23 right now, who put up a shot and it fell. That would be Jackson Grinchley. Now, I'm curious, yeah, no, Bruner has not taken a single shot, so they're trying to run a little bit of a different defense right now, I think, than they have in the past, uh, the Pioneers. Oh, Jason Petty nearly lost that ball. Um, now, Oh, wild pass nice by save. Cameron Foss, caught by, um, caught by Jamar Brown. Petty going into the paint, puts up a shot, no good, rebounded by the Pios. Um, yeah, a little bit of a different offense for the Pioneers right now as Jackson Brinchley just hit a three. We're looking at now 13 to eight, a 5-0 run by the Pioneers. 13 to 18. Uh, yes, 13 to 18, my apologies. 5-0 uh, run by the Pioneers. Cameron Foss now with the ball. Can't even get my thought about, um, thought about Tommy Bruner off yet. They're just, they're going so fast. Cameron Foss puts up a rare two-point shot that falls. Uh, I'm going to finish this thought now. Tommy Bruner has been the heart and soul of this uh, Pioneers team and just hasn't even taken a shot yet. DeAndre Craig has been really the player right now for the uh, for the Pioneers. Brinchley to Tynamo, who takes the three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by Christian Corsall. Corsall taking his time going down the court. Passes to Jason Petty to Jamar Brown. Corsalt now. He takes his shot. No good. Rebounded by Allen David Mukeba. Mukeba getting pushed oh into the corner. Gosh. Passes out to Jason Petty. I'm surprised he got that pass off. Jamar Brown now takes a three point shot. Oh, off the front of the rim. Or, well, that would have been the side of the rim, but the front for him. Seems like the game speed is kind of slowing down from how quick everybody was going in the beginning, and a nice block by 23. Alan Mukeba with a good block, and that's what he does. Jason Petty thought about taking three. This time he does take three, and it looks like threes are not falling as much anymore after the Ruse started off the game three for three from the three. That's a lot of threes. And the rebound off of a Pioneer shot <gasps> fell into the arms oh my. of, I'm not sure how that wasn't a foul, honestly. Yeah, 24 just 
grabbed Jason Petty's arm and pulled him back. But. We have now reached the under 12 timeout. I still can't believe that wasn't a foul, but it wasn't a foul. So we'll be right back with the last 11.38 of this first half. And we are back from break, 20 to 13, Kansas City, a seven point lead. And the things that have, uh, that have been happening lately is that um, after starting three of three from the three point line, the Roos are now four of eight, hitting one of their last five. But they are still two of two from the free throw line and lead by seven. Tommy Bruner will inbound the ball for the Pioneers and does so oh, wow. to, uh, that is Pedro Lopez San Vicente. Tyler Andrews is now in the game for uh, Cameron Foss for the Ruse. And the one game where Cameron Foss was sick and didn't play, Tyler Andrews lit it up. So I'm hoping to see some similar stuff from him tonight. So Christian Corsalt has the ball. Passes to Tyler Andrews, who thought about taking three, drives in, passes out to Jamar Brown, who does a little spin move, puts up a shot, and it rims out for um, for Jamar Brown, picked up now by Tommy Bruner. Pedro Lopez San Vicente charges in, steal by um, by Christian Corsalt, who drives in, and his pass is stolen as well. Uh, so two back-to-back. -back, uh, oh, what a block by Christian Corsalt! He, Tyson Garf went to go and take a three-point shot. Christian Corsalt comes in from the side and just swats that right out of the air. Now it's still going to be Pioneer's ball, but that was clean. That was a beautiful block. I was going to make a comment about how on the last shot, before that was um, knocked out of the court, uh, the 15 on the Pios, he was left wide open under the basket when they made that basket. He was. And I was... A little bit, of, little bit of concerns raised there. I was a little bit worried that the Ruse may be slacking a little bit on defense. Oh, uh, that's Jamal. Oh, uh, wait, no, that's uh, Jason Petty's second foul of the game. Ibonkali and Julian Ramirez Montero are checking in for the Ruse. Jason Petty has been taken out, and so has da Alan David McCaba. And the inbound is successful. Tyson Garf with the ball for the Pioneers. And another foul is called. Corsalt just picked up a foul. Couldn't quite see where that, is that came from. That is the fifth foul of the half for the Ruse. They're now in danger of sending the uh, Pioneers into the bonus, while the Pioneers only have one foul. Hmm. Noticing a little bit of a trend from... Yesterday's game. It seems as though 
People don't quite like the uh, Roost. Tyson Garf now takes three. Does not fall. Rebounded. Nope, not rebounded by, um, by Jamar Brown. Now the Roost will, uh, will have possession, but the ball did go out of bounds. The Roos are 0 of their last four for, from the field, and they have a 2 minute and 40 second scoring drought, as that will also result in another uh, turnover. As Tommy Bruner now has the ball. That is Toko Tainamo, who thought about taking three, passes out, and the pass is stolen by Julian Ramirez Montero, and a foul called on the Roos. What? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. okay. <laughs> I saw the I it saw the Denver um, I saw the Denver bench cheering and I, um, was I on, was misled. <laughs> on twenty one on the Pios. yes Tyson Garf will pick up that foul. Corsalt with the ball now, out to Brown, Brown into Ibankali Ibankali to Andrews, but there is a foul. <laughs> Andrews got that foul. It, yeah, that foul resulted in one of the Pios being knocked to the ground. Wasn't sure what quite happened there, but. We're a little bit far away from the Ruse offensive uh, zone, but Otto Ankra now in for the, uh, for the Pioneers. That is Isaiah Otto Ankra, number 32. And now Tyson Garf out to Pedro Lopez San Vicente to DeAndre Craig, Garf, Craig. Craig with a little bit of a shove. A little bit of an elbow. And the ball went out of bounds anyway, so the Ruse will get possession. Corsalt now with the ball. I've seen a lot of Christian Corsalt uh, communicating with the other Ruse on the court tonight. It's always nice to see. Anytime he is asked about uh, his own or his own performance, how is that not a foul? <laughs> um, Christian Corsalt uh, got the ball anyway. So now Andrews, nine on the clock. Ibankali, Corsalt will take a three. No good. No good. And the rebound, uh, Lopez San Vicente. Now 32 takes, uh, that is Otto Ankra takes a three, and it's good 18 to 20 Ruse. The Ruse are 0 of their last six from the field. Um, three turnovers in the last four minutes and 20 seconds, and a scoring drought at the same time. Andrews to Brown. Brown takes three, and it falls. That breaks the scoring drought and the field goal drought. The Ruse are back up five. They had me on the edge of my seat there for a second. A little bit. Let's hope that their defense can stay in the game. Garf now with the ball to, uh, that is Isaiah Carr on the court. Otto Ankra. Otto Ankra. And his three bounces off the back iron. Now, I want to finish my thought here real quick on Christian Corsalt. Anytime that he gets any compliments in a post-game press conference, he just deflects to his teammates. So he is just humble. He's a team player. He's everything you want as a coach. I believe a foul was just called. Yes, DeAndre Craig just picked up a foul. And we have reached the under eight timeout. So, any last thoughts before we go to break? No, Zach. I'm just ready to get some points back up on the board for the Ruse. I completely agree with you. It's, it's 23-18 Ruse. Five-point lead. We'll be right back.
and we are back. The score is currently 23-18 in favor of the Ruse. Let's hope that head coach of the year, Marvin Menzies, has given the Ruse some words of wisdom to come back into this first half. I feel like it's been a pretty long first half. It does feel that way. Now, or first quarter, I would apologize. No, 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 you're right, it is halves. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, it's late. It is late. It's um, my bedtime. <laughs> it's well past our bedtime. I passed out at about 9.30, 9.45 last night. But regardless, here we go. Babacar Jello back in, as is Alan David Mukeba. I think the only one who's played all or every minute of this game so far is Jamar Brown, as, oh, barely missed that one by Jallo. And, uh... Looks like Alan David Mukeba took a little bit of a tumble into uh, into the, I don't know if that's seats over there or more media, but. It's media. Uh, I hope both <laughs> Alan David Mukeba and the media are okay. I think Mukeba's fine, but uh, he's a big guy to have run into you. Yeah, I'd be a little bit terrified if he came over to this side. Yeah. Fell over on me. As uh, Toko Tainamo now, and Tommy Bruner takes his first shot from three, no good. So he is actually 0 from one from the or 0 for one from the field in general. Diallo now with the ball. Out to Cameron Foss. And it looks like they've finally realized that they have to uh, guard Foss. <laughs> <laughs> Jamar Brown now has the ball. I mean, it's really pick your poison with this team. If oh, that, how is that not a foul? Anyway, Alan Mukeba with the ball. As he does a little bit of a spin move, passes out to Julian Ramirez Montero, and Montero's pat, uh, shot off the rim as the buzzer sounded. Now Tynamo looks to take three, doesn't. Turns around a little bit, and a foul called on the ruse, of course. On Mukeba. What do you think the reason is for all these foul calls, Zach? I don't know. Now, I do know that this Ruse team plays very tough defense. I'm not surprised they're getting all these calls. What I am surprised about is that the Pioneers only have three. I'd agree with you there. As Tynamo takes his first free throw shot and it bounces off the front of the rim and out. Christian Corsalt comes back in for Julian Ramirez Montero. Gets a little... Uh, Gets a little high five, more of a low five from Marvin Menzies. As now the chant is, do it again by the Ruse mob. And he does do it again as it bounces off the left side as Jamar Brown gets the inbound. Out to Christian Corsal. He takes three. No good. And there should have been a reach over foul there on number 23, Jackson Brinchley. But there was no such thing. It's Bruner now. Uh... Passes out to Brenchley, out to Otto Ankra, who takes three. And Jamar Brown rebounds out uh, as it was no good. You know, Zach. Yeah, go ahead. Apologize. Um, I'd hate for tonight's story of the game to be the difference in foul calls like it was last night. I would hate the same. Um, but right now it just looks like we've reached a little bit of a cold streak in. As another foul is called on the ruse, a little bit of a cold streak for both teams. Jallo picks up his first foul, and I don't know if we're going to leave this first quarter, or I'm sorry, first half, um, with a single Rue who has touched the court without a foul. Yep, we're currently at eight fouls versus the Pios three fouls. Brinch Lee with the ball now. He goes charging in, threw a little bit of an elbow. No call. Bruner now with the ball. Now Craig takes three. No good. Rebounded by Christian Corsall. Um, I had something I wanted to mention. Uh, I've since forgotten about it. But it'll come back to you. It will come back to me eventually. Jamar Brown looking for anything, leading his team. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Now Alan David McCaba with the ball. Looks to I believe a foul was called on Alan David McCaba as well. 
No, it was called on Tokyo Tynema. I don't know. I can't tell if that's going to be called a shooting foul or not, but. I don't believe it will be. Well, but. Makes no sense because he was going to the basket, but whatever. <laughs> as you can tell, we have our opinions about this. <laughs> uh, as I believe that's Christian Corsalt who just took a three, no good. Listen, I'm a little bit scarred from last night's game. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, the Roos are again 0 of their last four from the field. So they've reached a definite hold streak. This halftime break will be very good for them as we have reached 446 left in this half. A missed shot results in a Cameron Foss rebound. And Foss now to Giallo. Giallo just kind of wandering around. It passes to Jamar Brown who takes three. No good. DeAndre Craig rebound. The Roos need to stop living and dying by three. Yeah, hopefully this um, halftime will be a good break for them because it seems like they've hit a little bit of a, a lull in the game. Lopez San Vicente now with the ball. Puts it up. No good. I don't know how oh. he missed that. Huge elbow. Yes, that will be called a foul on uh, Pedro Lopez San Vicente. But I'm, I'm just kind of in shock that he missed that. He's, he's a tall guy. He, he's not exactly short. That is the 15 foul. Uh, getting his exact height. He is 6'8", and he just went up, tried to uh, completely open layup, and just overshot it. Yep, it happens. He could have gone for a dunk and he wouldn't have missed that, but, well, maybe not. I showed you a video earlier of a seven-foot guy just completely missing a dunk. <laughs> but regardless, Diallo now. Diallo out to Foss. Foss to, uh, that is Jamar Brown. Brown to Foss. Foss looking. Goes into the paint, puts up a deep mid-range shot. No good. Now we really just need to get out of this... Um Missing shots. Yes, this this cold streak is uh, Lopez San Vicente drinks three. Cold streak. I couldn't find the words for it. It is now 23 to 21, a two point game with three minutes and 23 seconds left in this half. With the start of this game, 11 to two, I did not expect this towards the end of the half. But it's what we have, and the Ruse need to work around it. Corsal goes in, finds a mid range shot, and drains. Looks like a dead ball foul. On Diallo? I guess so. The shot's no good. I guess he fouled before the shot was put up. Uh, we have reached the under four timeout. So uh, I believe we will be taking a break. I'm waiting for it to update on the screen to confirm. And it is a media timeout. We will be right back.
coming back from break, I believe it's supposed to be 23 to 21. They haven't yet waved off um, the Christian Corsault jumper, but there was a personal foul called on Alan and David Mukeba immediately after, and the refs did wave it off, but the points are still on the board. But taking a quick look at the points leaders in this game, Lopez San Vicente and Jackson Brinchley both have five for Denver. Meanwhile, Cameron Foss leads the game with 11. And the scoreboard still reads 25 to 21, so I think we'll just go with that, as that is uh, Isaiah Carr at the line, missed the first. Well, missed the, uh, I guess that was a one and one. Uh, yeah, they're on the bonus. I'm, I need to switch my brain from women's basketball to <laughs> men's, where there does exist a one and one. Christian Corsalt to Babacar Diallo. Diallo out to uh, Jamar Brown. Jamar Brown nearly oh traveled. Nearly traveled. Uh, twice, actually. Corsalt now takes a mid range. Well, that's actually a long range uh, uh, two point shot, but a uh, foul was called. Well, I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm thinking it was on the ruse. No, it looks like the Roos have the ball. It's kind of hard to see the offense from where we're sitting, but hopefully next, next half, half we'll, we'll be able to actually see. Next half we'll have a better angle for this and have a worse angle for the for the uh, Pios. I do believe that the ref pointed towards the Roos direction, so I think. I think you're right. I'm just getting so confused by the Pioneers clapping. They're bench clapping every time. Uh, they said second team foul. I'm sorry, not second team foul, uh, sixth team foul, second, I believe, on Bruner. Which, if Bruner gets in foul trouble, that's big trouble for the Pioneers in general. He is, like I said, the heart and soul of this team. Right. Yeah, I going into this second half here, I definitely did not expect the score to be anywhere near what it is right now, considering that the Ruse are the two seed. The Ruse are the two seed. The Ruse also went out to... An 11 to 2 start. It really just wasn't a lineup for for the Pioneers to be making this one close. But lo and behold, it's a close game. It's a four point game. Still, I'm not entirely sure what was going on with that uh, with that foul on uh, Alan David McCabe because I mean, you agree that you saw the refs wave that shot off. Yep. But. Here it is still on the board, and nothing's been said. So, I mean, I don't think we're at liberty of um, – I think we can say whatever we want about these refs, and to be completely honest with you, they're not great. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to choose to say no comment at this point. <laughs> exactly like Imani Bennett did – in last night's uh, press conference, which, uh, frankly, the foul was upgraded to a flagrant one on Tyson Garf, I apologize. It was not Tommy Bruner. So I believe that the Ruse, which Jeff and Gondu is the one shooting to, the Ruse will shoot to and retain possession. First shot for Ngandu coming up. And it just missed short. Got quite a big reaction from the crowd. Now, you remember earlier when we were in the car, I was, I was uh, calling again as the second one does go in. I was calling Jeff Ngandu's name, preparing for tonight's uh, broadcast, re uh, remembering his reverse dunk. I can't remember who it was against. I believe it was North Dakota State um, where he just went up and slam dunked over his head just behind him. Need another Corsal one of those tonight. Corsall nearly picked up a five-second violation, but he got it out. But, yes, we, you are right. We do need another one of those. It's Babacar Giallo with the ball now. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Oh, oh he, was reading, he was reading something that uh, was not there for Jamar Brown. He tried to pass to Jamar Brown, and Brown moved just a second before he passed the ball. 
and uh, only one point off that flagrant one. That's not exactly ideal for the Ruse. I, I wish that I had seen what happened to elevate that to a flagrant one, but regardless, it was called. A three-point shot by Otto Ankara um, was short, and it was rebounded by the Ruse. Christian Corsalt now with the ball. Corsalt went in, passed out to Bobcar Giallo. Giallo nearly lost the ball. It was nearly picked off by Tommy Bruner, and this is a mismatch made in heaven for Tommy or for yeah Tommy Bruner. Uh, and I believe yes, another foul was called on Tommy Bruner. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I was misreading the game sheet. That is his uh, first personal foul for uh, Tommy Bruner. Looks Bob like, Cargiello shooting two. <laughs> looks like the refs are calling more fouls on the Pios. Yes. Looking at nine fouls on the Ruse, seven fouls on Pioneers. Diallo hit the front end of a one and one I apologize for interrupting you so much. It's okay. You've got a lot of thoughts in your head. We're getting our chemistry. <laughs> if the Ruse win, we'll be better tomorrow. <laughs> Second... Second uh, free throw for Bobcat Giallo is good. The Ruse are five of six from the line. Uh, five of 14 from three. So they have shot 14 threes. And I mean, hey, they've made more than 33% of them. Tommy Bruner goes up, takes a shot. Oh, man, I was terrified that was about to hit me. But uh, thank you, Jackson Brenchley, for saving my life. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Bruner <laughs> into... Uh, into uh, that is Toko Tynamo. Tynamo's shot rebounded by Christian Corsal. We have 125 remaining in this first half. As Christian Corsal with the ball out to Cameron Foss. Foss to a rare sighting of Tyler Andrews and Cameron Foss on the court at the same time. But uh, back to Cameron Foss. Foss back out to Andrews. Andrews puts up three, and it's good! There we go. The Ruse have found the rhythm again. It is a 10-point lead, 31 to 21. Got about 50 seconds left in this first half. Hopefully we can carry this energy into Bruner. the second half. You're right. Bruner just had his hand, just the ball stolen from him. And a foul called against the Pioneers. A one and one coming up for the Ruse. Jackson, Jackson Brinchley picks up that foul. And uh I mean, that was just a beautiful method there by, uh, by Christian Corsalt. He just, he saw the ball, just put his hand under it, and just scooped it in. And now he finds himself at the line shooting one and one. First one is good. The second is coming up. And the second shot bounces off the side, rebounded by, uh, that was Jackson Brinchley. Now Isaiah Otto Ankara out to Brinchley. Uh, Brinchley back to Otto Ankara. Three-point attempt by, um, by Otto Ankara ends up being rebounded by the Ruse. There is about a .5 second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Or, I'm sorry, the shot clock and game clock. So the Ruse can drain this down as far as they want. Doesn't look like they will as Jamar Brown is moving qu uh, quick. Puts up a shot, no good. Rebounded by uh, Cameron Foss. Cameron Foss out to, uh, oh, that's going to be a foul. Oh, wow. And it and uh, Christian Corsalt, who was taking the three, took a pretty tough tumble. But he finds himself again at the line as the foul's even up at nine with 7.5 seconds left on this clock. So he'll be shooting one, uh, no, he'll be shooting three as that was a shooting foul. Well, he was shooting three. Roos have a shot to extend this out to 15. Nope, not the first one. As it looks like uh, Promise EDR will be uh, coming in here soon. Coruscant's second free throw is good. So it looks like uh, Ibonkali 
Diallo and Idiaru are checking in for Foss, um, Ngandu, and Jamar Brown. Brown will see his last minute of this first quarter, or of this first half, come in, with se or end with 7.5 seconds left on this clock. The timeout was called. Coruscant seems to be kind of leading the team, as I mentioned earlier, in communication and kind of stepping up as a leader, which is something I expected from uh, Jamar Brown for tonight's game. But yes. Seems like Coruscant's uh, kind of leading the way for the Ruse. Yeah, Coruscant often finds himself um, leading the team as sort of the point guard uh, position. But Jamar Brown is the one who just does it all. He gets the blocks, he gets the assists, or not really the blocks, but the assists, the rebounds, the points especially, as Corsalt is about to shoot his last free throw. And that one is off. The last 7-5 will come off with DeAndre Craig off to Toko Tynamo, and his shot is short. As this half has come to an end, your ruse are up. Well, it looks like something's going to happen here. They're checking for time, I guess. But the band doesn't really seem to care. They're just playing that uh, that ruse fight song. <laughs> now they stop. Um, but what I wanted to say about Jamar Brown is he played all 20 minutes of this first half, aside from 7.5 seconds. So he's really gotten he's gotten the minutes in. And it, you can tell, Coach Marvin Menzies really wants this. He wants to prove that this team can do it all. They can go all the way to the tournament. Right. I'm just hoping that they can extend their lead just a little bit more in the second half here. And it, and it looks like that um, clock is back at 1.1 seconds. The ruse will inbound, but I assume that if they get the inbound in, they're, they're just going to dribble. There's not going to be a buzzer beater shot coming off of this. Never mind. They get the inbound in. Jamar Brown gets it. Cameron Foss, three. No. Dang. That would have been beautiful. <laughs> oh, I was about to go crazy if that had gone in. But we have reached halftime officially now. The Ruse are playing. The Ruse mob is playing the Ruse fight song. And we will be back in 15 minutes. Thank you all for tuning in. The score is 33 to 21, 12 point lead. And like I said, we will be back with the second half action after this.
coming back about 30 seconds before the second half starts, and the Roos are up 33 to 21. They're shooting only 31.3% from the field, but 37.5% from three. Meanwhile, the Denver Pioneers are eight of 29 from the field, 27.6%, and four of 15, 26.7% from three. What do you see that the Ruse need to do better in the second half, Jaslyn, to really close this game out? Honestly, just finding the open men on offense and making way for some more shots to fall. Because I feel like they're, they're doing pretty well at defense. I completely agree with you. The Ruse found themselves off to a very hot start, 3-3 three, three from the, uh, the three-point line. And that was actually their first three field goals as well as Tyler Andrews gets set to start the second half. Um, but then they found themselves in more of a cold streak. So they need to not do that. As, right. Um, Tyler Andrews nearly picked up a five-second five violation uh, immediately off the start of the second half, but now Jamar Brown has the ball into Melvin Ibonkali. Ibonkali back out to Jamar Brown, and uh, Brown now trying to find the net, but passes into Ibonkali. Ibonkali puts up a shot, no good, rebounded by uh, Tommy Bruner. Bruner now with the ball, out to DeAndre Craig. Craig setting up, but decides to not take the three. Takes the two instead, and a block by Cameron Foss. It was thankfully not a foul, but unfortunately, with the block, he knocked it out of the out of bounds. So Denver is taking the ball out. Now, one thing that I want to mention is that the Ruse have had the lead for 18 minutes and 27 seconds in this game, and the Pioneers have not led a single second in this game. As Pedro Lopez San Vicente now has the ball. Out to Craig. Craig takes a three-point shot. No good. Rebound Cameron Foss, but uh, the Pioneers actually got it back. Bruner now decides, nearly nearly decides to take three, but instead Toko Tynamo does. This time, the Ruse actually get the rebound. But unfortunately for the Pioneers, it looks like um, Jackson Brinchley is a little shaken up. And the foul was actually on Jackson Brinsley. I didn't even realize they called a foul. Ball's back in play for the Ruse as Bobcar Giallo has it. Now, one thing that I've noticed, Jaslyn, is that while there have been a lot of fouls tonight, I don't know if there's been a single travel. Before. I don't, I don't like think so. Time. Yeah, there was about like three travels within the first I want to say like 10 minutes of yesterday's game, but I can't recall a single one tonight. In the first points of the game, or not of the game, I'm sorry, of, <laughs> of the, the half, half, have fallen, and it was by the hands of Tommy Bruner getting his first two points of the game um, after a second uh, wasted possession by the Ruse. As Cameron Foss takes three, no good. Ball's going to bounce out of bounds as Pedro Lopez San Vicente made a business decision <laughs> to not touch that one. Now Jackson Brinchley will uh, inbound the ball for Pioneers. So uh, Tommy Bruner cut, it down, cut the lead down to only 10 points, and now the Pioneers will look to cut into it even more. Bruner takes a three-point shot, bounces off the rim into the hands of Cameron Foss. I'd love to see Foss put up some more threes this half. Yes, I would love the same thing. I'd love to call those, and i love to see him being hot in this game. He hasn't had that, uh, that really hot streak since, I believe, really the game against Kansas and Allen Fieldhouse, as Bobakar Giallo takes a rare three, and a reach-over foul called on Melvin Ibonkali. Now, it's possible that um, there were a few other games where uh, Cameron Foss was really hot from the three-point line. I haven't watched all of their games, the first foul of the half on the ruse was called on Ibonkali. Um, but the last game that I remember him being hot in was the game against Kansas. As Lopez San Vicente takes a three, no good into the arms of Ibonkali. As Jamar Brown nearly took a three, uh, made a business decision there not to, uh, not to take it. Though I think that instead of uh, going into the uh, inside the arc, he should have... Um, stayed outside the arc 
taking the three-point shot. As now the Ruse get possession again after a wild pass by Tommy Bruner. Ten-point lead for the Ruse on their, I believe, fifth possession of the half. Corsalt checks into the game for the Ruse, and he bounces the ball out of bounds, but I believe a foul has been called on Pedro Lopez San Vicente, and that is the case. It's the second of the half. Yeah, we have a little bit better view of the offense now, and it definitely seemed like number 15 pushed Corsalt definitely out of the court. Corsalt's inbound successful to Jamar Brown. Now Jason Petty in again. Corsalt out to Brown. Brown decides again to do the exact same thing, and he had he had his jersey ripped, but a foul was instead called on the ruse. That's a little bit of craziness. Jamar Brown picks up a foul as his jersey was grabbed from the inside sleeve and pulled. Menzies seems to be a little bit frustrated by that call, as you know, the other so am I. Fans are. <laughs> Tommy Bruner puts up another shot. Looks like a reverse layup from here, but I, I'm still kind of just a little annoyed by that uh, by that foul there. I mean, I, I just can't believe it. Regardless, the Ruse have the ball back. Up only eight. It's core assault. A foul on Tommy Bruner has been called, and he is unhappy. That is his second personal foul of the game. I think that may have been a sort of makeup call in a sense. I think that the foul was there, but it may have been a little weaker because, to be completely honest with you, I didn't see much. I didn't either. But as long as we got the makeup foul for that horrible call. I, I'm with you on that. Jason Petty now with the ball. Petty finally moves after just standing there for like five seconds and his shot's blocked, rebounded by himself, and this time stolen by Toka Tynemo. Bruner finally getting his groove, passes out to Toko Tynemo, out to Jackson Brinchley. Brinchley pushed a little bit from the back by a Bonkley, no call. Now Bruner has the ball again, out to Brinchley. Brinchley up, and his shot's good. Six point lead now. As you said about Brunner finding his groove, I feel like after halftime he seems to have a little bit more fire in his game. The Omaha Mavericks are excited right now, and they have every right to be. It's a 6-0 run currently just to start the half. We are four minutes and 21, I'm sorry, four minutes and 11 seconds into this second half. The Roos have yet to find the basket. Right, right, and we need to extend our lead rather than let it shorten. And I'm sorry, the Ruse did not actually call. Uh, I don't believe the Ruse actually called a timeout. We are in a media timeout for the under 16. So the Ruse find themselves down or up by six, 33 to 27, 15 49 left in this half, left in this game. Can the Ruse keep their lead and keep their season alive? We'll just have to wait and find out. We'll be right back. Coming back from the first media timeout of the second half, the Ruse did actually take a timeout, but it was called a media timeout. So uh, the the Mavericks, or I'm sorry, not the Mavericks, the Pioneers, 
I am still in last night's game. Um, the Pioneers were very excited to make uh, Kansas City call, I believe, their first, no, their second time out of the game. But the Ruse really need to find the basket. Going scoreless in the first 4-11 of this half is not ideal, and they need to do something. Need to do something to um, to get this going, and I believe we're back in the media timeout. This time, the actual under 16. Uh, I'll just have to wait and confirm that. Yes, it is a media timeout. So, you know, nine seconds later, and we're going back to a timeout. Um, the Ruse just need to find the basket, and I don't think that this is the method that they were expecting coming out of the half. So we'll be right back again. And hopefully this time, see the Ruse actually score some buckets. I agree. All righty, and we are back here at 1540 minute mark in the second half. Currently, Ruse are leading 33 27, and it looks like we're inbounding the ball here. Yep, the Ruse will be inbounding again after uh, I believe it was Corsalt just decided to throw it off of the leg of one of the uh, one of the uh, pioneers as Alan Mukeba nearly got the first bucket of the half for the Ruse, but it ended up just rolling off the back iron. So nonetheless, we stay at 33-27. As now, Brinchley has the ball for the, Pi uh, for the Pios, and Bruner nearly dribbled it out of bounds, but kept it in bounds, barely takes a three, and it drains nothing but net. It is a three-point game, Jaslyn. Things wow. are not looking good now for the Ruse. They got to get something going. They got to get out of this slump or they're going to end their season early. As the two seed, they were expected to come into this game. They were six point favorites in this game. Jamar Brown just passed it to a Pio. Yep, now Tommy Bruner has the ball again, looking to make it a one point game. And he lost the ball, but there's going to be a foul on, I believe, Christian Corsall. You know, Zach, I am just a little bit disappointed that the Ruse didn't come out gunning in the second half. It just seems like they're in this slump right now, and they can't seem to pull themselves out of it. Bruner at the line, shooting two. They're going to call it a shooting foul. And he, if he makes both of these, will have nine points in this, in this game, all of them coming in this half. As he makes the first one. Cameron Foss still leads the game with 11 points, but it's not enough yet. And the second shot by Bruner is good. So it is a 33-32 game, and the, the Pioneers have eaten into that 12-point lead in a dramatic fashion. The Ruse need to find the basket, and they need to find it now. Looks like a foul was called on number 25 on Pios. That is Toko Tyman. I'm bad with names. Foul. Fourth team foul already for the, uh, for, the, for the Pioneers in this half. Alan Mukeba with the ball right now. He passes out to Christian Corsalt. Corsalt 
puts up a shot, and, and it finally good. falls for the Ruse. The Ruse are back out to a three-point lead after a Christian Corsault. Nice little layup. Now, they're not out of the woods quite yet, as it looks like Isaiah Carr is ready to check in for the Pioneers. Toko Tynamo with the ball now. Crosses into the paint, puts up a shot, and he's fouled. That will be the fourth team foul for the Ruse in this half. That will be Alan Mukeba who got the foul called on him. As Melvin Ibonkali looks to check back in for the Ruse as well. Toka Tynamo will be at the line shooting two for the Pioneers. First one is good. Now Toko Tynamo is a Melvin Abonkali checks back in uh, as Toko Tynamo is a 75% shooter from the line so this second shot is about a 50-50 to go in statistically. We'll see what happens. Second shot, no good. Rebound off the hands of the Ruse out of bounds. No, never mind. It was off the hands of the Pioneers. Isaiah Carr checks in for the Pioneers. <clears throat> as Christian Corsault brings the ball down the court. Jamar Brown now. Brown puts up a shot from the line. No good. Rims in and out. Jamar Brown needs to find his heat, or this will be a bad, bad loss for the Ruse. Right. One thing you can certainly tell um, by the atmosphere of the game right now is that every single Omaha Pioneer is in the game. Every call, every single player on the bench is standing up and cheering for their team. Ibonkali just got another foul called on him, and it's going to be a shooting foul with Bruner at the line, and Menzies is arguing that his hands were straight up, which I would agree but the foul was called nonetheless as Jeff and Gondu looks to check back in. The Ruse are in deep foul trouble as Bruner misses his first uh, free throw. Um, we're looking at 14 fouls called against the Ruse. Two of them have um, two of them have three, and that's Ibonkali and Alan Mukeba. Bruner's second free throw is good. So we're looking at a 34-35 game with the Ruse having a one-point lead. Jamar Brown is feeling the pressure right now. Passes out to uh, Jason Petty. Now Christian Corsalt. Corsalt. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Passes out to Cameron Foss. Uh, his shot airballed. Rebounded by Jamar Brown. Jamar Brown puts up a two-point shot. This is a very, very close second half. As a shot by Tommy Bruner, a mid-range shot, goes in 37-36. Christian Corsalt out to Cameron Foss, Jason Petty. What did they foul just call? is called on the ruse. I'm not quite sure what it was. I don't. I'm not quite sure who I'm not quite sure who it was. It was it was Jamar Brown. Jamar Brown is now has three fouls. He is in deep foul trouble and is coming out of the game. I'm a little bit worried, Zach. I'm worried too. The heart and soul of this team has three fouls and is now on the bench. Tommy Bruner with the ball, feeling some pressure. Passes out to Jackson Brinchley. Brinchley. Uh, now uh, somehow ends up in the hands of 21. Brinchley now shoots the ball and hits three. They have their first lead of the game, the Pioneers, 39-37. Christian Corsalt, Jason Petty. Jason Petty to Tyler Andrews. Andrews back to Corsalt. Someone's going to need to step up in place of, as a block is called, or not a block, a block happens against Christian Corsalt, but a foul is called on 21. That is Tyson Garth. 21 seems a little bit shocked by this foul call, and 
To be quite honest, I didn't really see any uh, arms getting hit off the shot. No I arms really just were saw. hit, but it was uh, his arms were out over as he was blocking. So we've reached the under 12 timeout. It's a media timeout, so we will be right back. The Roos find themselves down for the first time in this game by 239-37. Coming back from break, the Roos find themselves down for the first time, 39 to 37. The two seed against the seven seed, the seven seed being Denver. The Roos really need to find their fire in this half, in the last 11.56 of this half, to end up winning this game. I can't believe that I'm saying that after a very hot 11 to two start. But now Corsalt finds himself at the line after a foul on Tyson Garth. He can tie this game here. First shot is good. It's also good. This I'm thankful that we shortened the amount of time that Pios were in the lead, and it looks like we're doing a full court press. Yes, the Pios are now, uh, have only led for 20 seconds in this game. As Bruner's trying to find something, anything, as Garf finally gets the ball out to Carr, Carr to Brinchley, back to uh, Bruner. Bruner goes up, out, and the ball goes to the Ruse. Babacar Giallo checks back in. And what I was saying to Jaslyn over the break um, is Cameron Foss needs to find the court more and find his fire again. Because he was really hot at the beginning of the game and has done very little since. As Christian Corsalt goes into the paint, passes out to Jason Petty. Petty takes a three, no good, bounces off the rim, back into his own hands. And he puts up a two-point shot. The Roos have the lead back, 41-39. Bruner with the ball. Takes a three immediately. No good. Good. But that will be a two-point shot as it was tipped by a uh, pioneer into the basket. So this game is tied again at 41. Kind of regretting all that caffeine now. Got me jittery. Oh, what a what a shot by Bob Giallo. Just over the head of... I believe that's Tyson Garth. Yes, it is. So he just shot that ball right over the head of Tyson Garth and it just went right in. <clears throat> a three-point shot by Tommy Bruner. No good. And a foul called, I believe, on the Pioneers. Yes, that will be called on Isaiah Carr. Both teams are one foul away from being in the bonus. 
as Corsalt now has the ball out to Tyler Andrews. Babacar Giallo. Giallo takes a three. No. Off the rim. Tommy Bruner. Bruner out to Brinchley. Brinchley out to um, DeAndre Craig, and his three-point shot is no good. And the Ruse keep the ball as it goes out of bounds. Now, what do you think here, Jaslyn? Do you think the, the tide's finally turning for the Ruse? You know, Zach, I really hope it is. I just I can't put my finger on what we need to change about our offense to make these shots start falling. Jason Petty now with the ball. 9.34 left in this game. Left in one of these two teams' seasons. As Christian Corsalt does the exact same thing as I mentioned Diallo did earlier. Goes right over as Diallo takes a tumble. Um, goes right over a pioneer and just lays it in. Now Brinchley with the ball. Brinchley is the one that, um, that I believe Diallo ran into. Now Bruner. Bruner goes into the uh, inside the three-point line back out. And a foul will be called on Christian Corsall. That will be his third team, uh, the third personal foul, the seventh team foul of the half, and Bruner will be in the line shooting one and one. Pedro Lopez San Vicente, as I accidentally just switched into an accent, um, just checked into the game. I am not in the Spanish class. I will not do that again. Uh, is Bruner is at the line and a whistle is blown. The Ruse mob is chanting something, or at least one of them is saying something. Can't quite make out what it is, and to be quite frank, uh, they should probably stop screaming. You know, Zach, I gotta hand it to them. I could never just scream nonsense in front of a whole arena of people. <laughs> it looks like there was a wet spot on uh, inside the lane, and so um, they got that wiped up, and now Bruno will take his two or take his one and one. First shot is going up. And it's good, so he will get his second. Now, I believe he actually missed one earlier. He did, and it was the back end of a 1-1, one one, I think. Um, Tommy Bruner is 81.2 from the line, and he makes his second. Bruner's actually coming out of the game now, which is quite interesting as he only had two fouls, and he has 14 points, so he must be just taking a quick breather. And uh, in comes Jackson Brinchley for him. As Corsalt has the ball. Corsalt tries to find a way into the paint. He does. Puts up a shot. No good. Rebound. Melvin Abonkali. Abonkali just out to Diallo. Diallo inside, outside now. Out to Corsalt. Corsalt takes a deep three. No good. Rebound, Tyler Andrews. Andrews, this is a wild sequence out to Diallo. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Diallo takes a three, and it's good! There we go. The Roos now have a five-point lead, 48-43, with 8.25 left in the game. Out to Otto Ankra. Otto Ankra to Brinchley. Brinchley goes inside, tries to put up the ball, passes out to Pedro Lopez, Sam Vicente. Uh, now Brinchley has the ball again. Brinchley tries to put up a three. It falls. We're looking at a two-point game now separating these two teams. <clears throat> Christian Corsalt to Jason Petty. Petty back to Corsalt. Corsalt out to Diallo. Diallo steps in out to Corsalt. Corsalt puts up a three, and it's off the top of the rim into the arms of Lopez San Vicente. Craig has a fast break, puts up a shot, and it's good. I got to say, that was a pretty good fast break. Yes, it was. This game is tied at 48. The Ruse tried to start out fast, but then slowed it down. So Corsalt now just kind of walking with the ball. Corsalt bumps into a, uh, a, a Pioneer, puts it out to Tyler Andrews. Andrews puts up his first three. No good, rebound. Uh, the ball will stay with the Roots as it was bounced out of bounds. We've reached the under eight timeout. 
The Roos are tied at 48 with the Denver Pioneers. Jaslyn, any words before we take a break? Nope. Honestly, I'm just very nervous at this point. I need this break. My voice hurts. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the last 7-17 of this game. One more break after this, and we'll see which, two, which of these teams moves on to play the winner of North Dakota, <laughs> Omaha, tomorrow. The game is not tomorrow. That game is tomorrow. So we'll be right back. Alrighty, welcome back. We are currently at 48 to 48 tie game. We previously mentioned that tonight's game was gonna be a defensive game and it has very much proved to be. Yes, the, uh, the Ruse have been known for their defense all season. And to be quite honest, that's what we've seen tonight. They are currently 16 of 53 from the field. Now they're about to inbound the ball and they have uh, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Uh, as a uh, as Corsalt looks to inbound and does so to Diallo. Diallo loses the ball real quick, but Ibankley picked it up, passed it, and it was uh, stolen by Brinchley. So no points off that, and the Pioneers have a chance to take the lead again as DeAndre Craig has the ball out to Bruner, who checks back in. Bruner. Passes out to Brinchley. Brinchley with the ball, looking around. Tries a spin move, puts up a shot, and it's good. The, the Pioneers are the first to break 50 in this game. They are back in the lead once again. Yes, they are. As Cameron Foss checks back in as well, he's the one that I mentioned should have a better game. And Jamar Brown is back in, too. Uh, Christian Corsalt loses the ball out of bounds. Uh, nearly out of bounds, I should say, as Babacar Giallo checks it back up. Um, yeah, and looks like the ball got over half court again. So should mean that the Pios possess it. It seems like all the refs are talking. I'm glad you saw what happened because I did not. And it looks like... Well, yeah, well, when um, – I don't remember who it was that threw the ball back in from going out of bounds. They went over half court again. Babacar Giallo to inbound, so the Ruse actually keep possession. And Christian Corsalt with the ball, looking, driving in, puts up a shot, and it falls. The game's tied again at 50. Now, to be quite honest, the Ruse should not be this close in this game, I mean, it's the two seed versus the seven seed. I agree. Realistically, it should be much, uh, much bigger of a difference. But a, this is March, and b, um, the Summit League was just really even this year. The Ruse only won four more Summit League games than the Pioneers did, and they're a very on and off team. As DeAndre Craig goes in, puts up a layup, and it's good. Gotta Fox. be honest, that was a beautiful shot. Yes, it was, and the crowd agrees. A uh, crowd made up of a majority of South Dakota State fans as they're only an hour away from this uh, arena as Cameron Foss puts up a three and it falls! There we go. Cameron Foss again from downtown. 
need him to come through with a few more threes. Uh, I just looked down at the game sheet. The Roos have shot 26 three-point shots this game. Wow. That's a lot. They've only made eight. <laughs> uh, possession here is going to stay with the Pioneers, as I believe we are about to go to our final time. No, we, I don't think we will. Uh, I think it's under four, so we've still got about a minute of game time before we, uh, we go back to our final break of potentially the season. No, don't say it. DeAndre Craig with the ball. Looked like he traveled to me, but no call. Otto Ankra checks back in, but balls with Brinchley. Brinchley puts up a shot, and nearly a shot clock violation, but the Ruse get the rebound off the rim, so it would, if the Pioneers had gotten it back, uh, they would have still had a shot clock. Christian Corsalt passes to Alan Mukeba, and a foul is called one and one for the Ruse now as they are in the bonus. Jackson Brinchley will pick up that foul, and the Ruse have a shot to extend their lead to three. Now, Alan David McCaba is at the line, shooting one and one. On the season, he is a 50% free throw shooter. First one, no good, so kind of stays with the stats. DeAndre Craig now with the ball for the Pioneers. Now, Toko Tynamo to Tommy Bruner. Bruner puts up a shot and it falls. The Pioneers have the lead again, 54 to 53. This is a very back and forth game, Jaslyn. Yep, it's about ready to have a heart attack here. Zach. Oh yeah, I was about to say, I don't know if my heart can handle this. Alan David Mukebo with the ball to Bob Cargiallo, out to Jamar Brown. Brown goes in, out, and a foul is called. Looks like a charge foul. On Jamar Brown, that's his fourth. He's Shoot. one away from fouling out. Now we've reached the final media timeout. We'll be back with the final three minutes and 57 seconds of one of these two team seasons. It's the quarterfinals of the Summit League Basketball Championships, and we're both about to die. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the final three minutes and 57 seconds of the Summit League Basketball Championship quarterfinals. The Roos find themselves down by one, 54 to 53. Jaslyn and I are both about to have a heart attack. I'm sitting here rocking back and forth. I can't tell if this monster caffeine is just catching up to me or I'm just on the edge of my seat because of how the Roos are playing right now. Hey, I mean, this team will get you going. It's really hard sometimes with these teams. They just, sometimes they just don't play well. But tonight, the Roos really need to find one or their season will be over. It's DeAndre Craig with the ball now for the Pioneers looking to extend their lead. 
Craig to Brinchley. Brinchley to Bruner. Bruner tries to go inside, can't find a lane. My heart's racing right now. Bruner tries to find a shot, Ooh. nearly loses the ball. And he's only got five seconds left on this shot clock. As DeAndre Craig takes a three, and it rims out, rebounded by Bob, um, sorry, Jason Petty. Ruse seem to be playing hot defense right now as there's only three minutes and 18 seconds left in this half, and they are down by one. The Ruse are really known for their defense as Jason Petty takes a three. That was really questionable in my opinion. You gotta get those twos in the board and you gotta just start racking up those points. Taking the threes, living and dying by the threes doesn't seem to be a strategy that's working as they, going into that uh, final timeout, was, were eight of 26. Excuse me, I was yawning. It's a little bit late here. But. Tommy Bruner out to DeAndre Craig. Craig puts up a shot and it drains it. 56-53, the Ruse have to get something going. They have to. And you cannot live and die by the three in this position. You have to find those twos. They gotta start taking the ball to the basket. I think that's the major killer of our offense today is a lot of missed threes. Kieran Foss takes a three. <laughs> and Off the back missed. iron, rebounded by Christian Corsalt into Babacar Giallo. Giallo out to Christian Corsalt. 15 seconds on the shot clock, 2.11 left in this game. Corsalt takes a three, no good, rebounded by the Pioneers. Two minutes and two seconds. Looks like a foul was called and Pioneers will take possession. A lot of people in the stands were calling a travel. Yep. Regard, uh, and if it is a foul, it will be the Ruse ninth of the game. One and one will be coming up likely for. That uh, doesn't say that a timeout or that a uh, foul was called. It looks like it was just a dimmer timeout. Now, what we're seeing here on our uh, trends for, this, for the game, the Ruse are on a three minute and 25 second scoring drought. That does not spell victory for any team. My heart is slowly breaking here, Zach. Yeah. They came out so energetic and intense and in the game. And Personally, I'm just not ready for a, another seven-hour drive. Yeah. But emotionally, for this team, it would be heartbreaking to lose this game. And I feel like Menzies, Coach Marvin Menzies, will gather this team and just break the Pioneers' hearts. That's what needs to happen here. They need to come out, guns blazing, get some steals, get some points on the board, charge to the rim, and maybe even get some fouls They are on. now doing a full court pressure. Drawing fouls would be important for them instead of getting fouls, you know? Yep. Oh, oh, Ooh. Bruner just lost the ball. Babacar Giallo uh, took it. And now Christian Corsalt with the ball. A minute 40 left in this game. Can the Ruse pull it out? And? Uh, Corsalt just got pushed and no call was made. The ref was standing right there. Jason Petty, though, with the ball now. Out to Cameron Foss. Foss almost took a three. Instead gave it to Jason Petty. Petty goes up and finally drains a two. They're listening to us. <laughs> I mean, we are in vocal range of them, but I doubt they're actually listening. <laughs> you know, kind of locked into the game, you know. Jackson Brinchley passes the ball to DeAndre Craig. Craig and Rue up is the chant. I'm sorry, no, D up is the chant here in the Denny Sanford Premier Center. Another steal, Jason Petty on a fast break, goes up, lays up, yep, and the and Ruse have the lead again. 57-56, 53.6 seconds remaining in this game. My heart is about to jump out of my chest. The Ruse got to come up with another block or a steal or something. And Jason Petty comes down with a rebound, and a foul is called on Tommy Bruner. And he is in disbelief. He thought it should be a jump ball. One and one for the Ruse. I'm about to die. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I want to re-mention this. The Ruse have lost 
seven straight Summit League Championship games dating back to 2007. Their last win was against Valparaiso in 2007. And as you can feel, or as you can hear, I am out of breath as Jason Petty is going to the line, shooting one and one. The Roos can extend this to either two or three. First shot is good. There will be a second. 43.1 on the clock. Can the Ruse drain it down? Can they win this game? Tyler Andrews and Jeff and Gondu look to be checking back in in place of Cameron Foss and Alan and David Mukaba. Zach, this is a horrifyingly close game. And if we do manage to pull ourselves out of this, it makes me worry for Monday night's game and how that's going to look. Yes, I completely agree with you. But the great thing about this is, though the Ruse had a week to prepare for this game, they'll have another day to prepare for whoever their opponent is. As the winner of North Dakota Omaha, which plays tomorrow, will play the Ruse on Monday, if the Ruse pulled this out, I should say. I'm liable to cry if the, uh, if the Ruse win this. I will say that now, but, I'm going to try to keep that until after the post game. I'll wipe your te tears for you, Zach. <laughs> I think it's a little too late in the evening for me to cry right now. It is nearly 10.30. Um, and the next game will be at 8.30 as well if the Roos do end up advancing as Jason Petty is preparing to take his second shot. Score is 58-56. Could be 59 after this. And it bounces in. The Roos are up by three with 43.1 seconds remaining in this game. Whose season will end as DeAndre Craig received the inbound. Christian Corsalt guarding him all the way. Tommy Bruner with the ball now. Tried to steal it was, uh, was Bob Giallo. And Tom, Tyler Andrews was just fouled as Tommy Bruner wanted it to be a jump ball. A Tommy Bruner three-point attempt as Tyler Andrews will shoot two. A, a Tommy Bruner three-point attempt went off the rim and went directly into Tyler Andrews' hands. These last 30 seconds will likely take three or four minutes. <laughs> right. But I'm here for it if it means that my Kansas City Ruse will come out of here victorious. Andrew's first shot was no good, rebounded by DeAndre Craig. Craig taking the ball down. 26 seconds, no shot clock. And the ball was blocked, but a foul will be called, likely on Jeff and Gondu. It will be on Jeff and Gondu. It is the ninth team foul, and DeAndre Craig will go to the line, shooting two, not one and one, because it was a shooting foul. Number four, DeAndre Craig, is a 56.4% shooter from the line. First one, good. Now, Jaslyn, the question is, will the pressure of his entire season being on the line here get to him? I guess we're just going to have to find out with this one last shot. 23.9 remaining. If the Ruse can get the ball out of the, uh, A, if they can rebound this or he misses it, and the second is good. So if the Ruse can get this, to, I can hear that. <laughs> um, they got it out, and a foul was called uh, as Bob, or I'm sorry, not as Bobacar Diallo. I keep confusing Jason Petty and Bobacar Diallo. They don't look anything alike, really. Um, the tenth team foul was called on. Oh, it will be Christian Corso going to the line shooting two. the first bounces off the back iron now I'm sorry Jaslyn if this if the Ruse lose because they missed three straight free throws this will be a historic choke yep 21.2 remains and the second is good the My Ruse goodness. are up by two I am full court pressure put on as DeAndre Craig takes the ball out Got 15 seconds left in this game. Tommy Bruner with the ball. He is their three-point uh, shooter. 
as DeAndre Craig goes in. And number 32, Otto oh Ankra. My God. Otto Ankra just nailed a three. It is 61 oh to 60. God. The Ruse need to take two. And a timeout is called by Marvin Menzies. My heart is in my stomach right now, Zach. Heartbreak city for Jaslyn and I. <laughs> 5.6 seconds. Can the Ruse pull this out or even get a foul drawn on them? If there is a foul, first of all, it will be a two in, or it will be a two shot foul. So if even one of them goes in, we're going to either overtime or win. But the Ruse have to hit this next shot. 5.6 seconds. If there is a steal, if there is a block, if anything happens, the Ruse will lose and their season will be over. Oh my gosh. 5.6 is enough to make a shot happen. They just need to inbound this ball successfully and make a shot, and they will come out victorious. I'm keeping my hopes up. I see you over there wincing, but I'm going to keep my hopes up, and I will be liable to cry if they lose as well. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is no matter what, I'm going to have to wipe your tears for you. <laughs> I said I'm liable, not that I will. So... This last shot is all that the Roos, the Roos as an athletic department comes down to. Women's basketball, men's basketball, regardless, their entire season come down to one shot by one player. Who will they go to, Jamal Brown? I don't know, I'm, I feel like Christian Corson has been working so hard this game. Oh my lord. Jason Petty also has 13 points. Chris Corsalt has 13. Jamar Brown, Baba, uh, I'm sorry, Jason Petty, Babacar Giallo, Christian Corsalt, Cameron Foss. I swear to you, Jaslyn, if they take a three here, I will lose my mind. <laughs> it might you be all they have. Do not need a three. 5.9 on the clock. Jamar Brown. Timeout, Ruse. One more. My God. <laughs> This is too much. Kansas City is in the double bonus again. If they get fouled, they go to the line to shoot two. They could win it off free throws. Oh man, 30 second timeout for the Ruse. 5.9 seconds left in this game, left in one of these two team seasons. And it will be a heartbreaking loss for either team that loses. For the Ruse, because they miss one last shot. For the Pioneers because they give up one last shot. It's been a defensive game through and through. And I apologize for telling you to bet the over. <sighs> I am just, I'm not ready for the Roost season to be over. I'm not ready either, Jaslyn. 5.9 seconds. What did Coach Marvin Menzies draw up for this team? Will I cry? These answers coming up after this inbound. Christian Corsalt launches over to Cameron Foss, back to Corsalt. Corsalt drives in, puts up a shot. Oh my block, God. And it's rebounded by the Pioneers. No! The Ruse season is over. And it's Heartbreak City for the band, for the dance team. And the Omaha, I'm sorry, the Denver Pioneers are celebrating, just absolutely dogpiling the one who stole the ball. I didn't even see who it was, but Jaslyn, we're going home. I have no words. Really, I don't. I am utterly disappointed. I, I have no words either. You know what? This feels like um, the end of the Super Bowl whenever they were showing the opposite players losing. That's what I feel like right now. I'm, my jaw is literally hanging. Omaha's fight song rings through Denny Sanford Premier Center. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm going to ask Coach Menzies. As the two seed, it's the exact same as Omaha, uh, as it is the exact same as 2005 when the, when the Ruse is the two seed, lost to Oakland. We got to get out of here, but I don't know what to say. Two straight losses for the Ruse, and 
to be quite honest with you, I don't know why the band is playing the fight song. <laughs> Me neither. I mean, a six-game winning streak. Comes to an end. I guess that we'll just never break that neutral site curse. The Ruse have lost their eighth consecutive Summit League tournament game. And I hope that Christian Horsalt doesn't blame himself because honestly, this was just a bad shooting game overall. 20 of 62 from the field. And the, the Pioneers are celebrating, as they should. They win by one as the seventh seed, and they go on to play the winner of tomorrow's game between North Dakota and Omaha. Well, we should sign off. Thank you for listening to me throughout this season. And Jaslyn, thank you for joining me for this for this tournament. Absolutely. I hope to be back next year. We will be back next year. And to all the Ruse fans out there, I'm sorry that it ended this way. Someday, the Ruse will win their next Summit League game. A six-game win streak comes to an end after starting off the game on a 11-2 run. Good night, Kansas City. Good night to the world. We'll catch you later.